Fiona, I am so glad you're here. There's no one I want to ask this question to more. What is your reaction when you watch the defiance from these former Trump aides to the congressional subpoenas? And at the same time, Trump is out there repeating lie after lie about the election, and he's getting cheered on. Well, look, for me, and for, I'm sure many people watching this, this, is a very sad day for U.S. democracy, Stephanie. <clears throat> and I think you know, part of the problem is, in the case of uh, most of these individuals who have been uh, requested and subpoenaed to come, they see themselves tied with personal loyalty to Trump. They didn't see themselves in the public service of the United States. In some cases, they were acting in their capacity, so they weren't taking an oath to the Constitution. And this is, for them, a loyalty test to an individual. This is not them standing up or even contemplating standing up for uh, their loyalty to the United States. So again, this is a very sad day, and I'm obviously incredibly, like everyone else, disappointed to see that they wouldn't come forward to at least set the record straight, because this is, you know, as you're saying, and as your colleague is saying, very early in the investigation here. You've got a really unique perspective, though. You're someone who comes from Europe, you have studied Russia for many, many years. What is your take on what's happening in America right now? Where do you think we're headed? We're headed down a path that so many other countries have done. I mean, just like you said, in Europe, including Russia, you know, including Italy and Germany, at, you know, very difficult times in their um, histories. People don't want to recognize that. But I can just tell you that uh, most immigrants that I know from Europe and many who have come from war-torn societies from the former Yugoslavia or around the Middle East and Latin America and in uh, South Asia, you know, have said to me and have been trying to share their views on um, internet chat sites that, you know, the United States isn't really in trouble. We've all seen it before. And this is a path that it's very hard to turn back on. Once people start to forget that they're supposed to be in the service of the country, once they forget their loyalty to their country and put the loyalty of an individual or their own personal power and their own personal position that they're trying to pull that authority from, from the other individual, once they put all of that first, then we're in really big trouble. If we've all seen this before, why are we on this path now? You watched Trump, Trump up close and personal. Why do you think, after all that has happened, including losing the election, losing Congress, he still has such a hold on his party and a huge chunk of the American people? Well, he's one of these charismatic individuals. Look, there's so many books being written about him now. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, there is no surprise about various quirks in his personality, his narcissism, his skin thin, his you know thin skinned approach to things, his quickness to take insults. But he can really fire up a crowd. I mean, this is a guy who's a showman. This is a guy who uh, basically rose more on reality TV than in his own uh, business success. He's selling people something. And he's also making a connection to people who've been ignored by the mainstream parties. Look, let's just put it this way. Donald Trump is not a Republican. He's not a conservative. He wasn't part of the party. He's hijacked the party in the apparatus. He's He's bullied members of Congress and the Senate from the Republican Party into submission, and he's basically making a direct connection with his voters. And he's made it very clear that it's all about him. And people like him have thrived throughout history and uh, even, you know, at current times in other countries. And I think it's just very hard for Americans to step back and realize that they have got themselves in thrall, people who have voted to him, to an individual. They don't want to admit it to themselves. And any criticism about Trump is a criticism about them. He's kind of like an avatar in a big video game and a reality game. But in real life, you know, President Trump is taking us in the direction of tyranny. This is no joke. He connects with these voters emotionally, but a good reminder for our audience from a policy perspective, that forgotten voter that feels represented by Trump, his policies didn't represent their interests. And I, I just want to ask before you go, um, this, this, this committee, this January 6th committee, do you think it's going to change anything? Well, I hope it will, because we need a good accounting of what happened, uh, of all the events that led up to this. You know, I and many others have called this a slow mo motion coup. Uh, obviously, what happened in January 6 was the culmination of preceding events going all the way back before the first um, impeachment trial in the way that President Trump tried to keep himself in power by subverting the electoral process. You know, he has uh, talked down and trash-talked uh, the whole of uh, Americans' uh, democracy. And January 6 commission is an effort and uh, a possibility for setting the record straight before we move on, before the 2022 midterm elections and before the next round of presidential elections. It's extremely important to have some accountability and for people to take responsibility for their actions. And that's exactly what Congress is there for. It's supposed to be a check on unbridled 
presidential executive power. So I just hope that the members of Congress start to take this seriously and all of the people who have been called don't just take this as a political game with their own personal interests at heart.